view of the brain is designed to help you get oriented on the frontal or coronal sections as they will be produced in the laboratory. We will not identify all the structures you will encounter on and in the brain specimen. First, look at this hemisphere. Where is the frontal pole? And where is the occipital pole? And finally, where is the temporal pole? With that orientation, identify this fissure on the hemisphere. Hopefully you said this is the lateral fissure. And there's another major fissure that you can pick up here which goes from the lateral fissure up towards, usually doesn't reach all the way on to the mid-sagittal fissure. This sulcus is the central sulcus. We have, as human beings, a huge frontal lobe. Yes, the, the posterior part of it is motor function and premotor cortex, but we have a very large prefrontal cortex a very important association cortex. Notice up here then that on the frontal lobe we'll have a frontal gyrus that is very evident and goes a long ways back in our sections. So on each of our sections in the coronal plane we should be able to see the lateral fissure and the superior frontal gyrus. Now we're going to turn the brain around and look at the mid-sagittal surface of the brain. Get oriented on the hemisphere so that here you have which pole? The frontal pole and opposite the occipital pole. Now in each of our sections frontal sections of the brain, we should go through this part of this large structure that interconnects the two hemispheres. This is the corpus callosum, and in all of our frontal sections, we will see the body of the corpus callosum. And above it, you see a gyrus. This gyrus will also be in every coronal section, and that is the cingulate gyrus. So on coronal sections, you should find on the mid-sagittal edge the body of the corpus callosum and the cingulate gyrus, and on the lateral surface you should find the lateral fissure. We're now going to move to sections. In this section, one of the first that you will make of the brain, we have those three structures to find. On this side, we have the lateral fissure. On the mid-sagittal plane, we have the body of the corpus callosum and the cingulate gyrus. Now hopefully as you looked at this, you also recognized this space that we'll also see in each section below the corpus callosum. And what is that space? <laughs> the lateral ventricle. And making a large eminence in the lateral wall of the lateral ventricle is the head of the caudate nucleus. Now what would this white structure be that's in the depths of the caudate nucleus, in the depths of the basal ganglia. If you said the internal capsule, you're correct. And if you said the anterior limb, you did even better. Now in each section, where you can identify the lateral fissure, you should realize that the lobe below it is going to be the temporal lobe. And so here in the lip of the lateral fissure, you should be able to identify this gyrus as the superior temporal gyrus. 
the lateral fissure, the body of the corpus callosum, and the cingulate gyrus. And here again is the lateral ventricle, and the caudate nucleus now is starting to get much smaller. Here on the, where we identified the lateral fissure, this cortex below it, this lobe below the lateral fissure is which lobe? The temporal lobe. And on that lobe, we can identify a nucleus on the medial side of it. What is the one nuclear complex that we identify on the temporal lobe? If you said the amygdala, you did very well. And in this section, again, the coronal section, we need to identify the lateral fissure with the temporal lobe below it, the body of the corpus callosum with the lateral ventricle below it, and the cingulate gyrus. Now in this section, the caudate nucleus is getting very small, and it's up above a more complex looking structure that's not nearly as homogeneous as the caudate nucleus, and that is what structure? That is the thalamus. Next to the thalamus, we can see a myelinated structure, again, that runs in this position. What myelinated structure is lateral to the thalamus? If you said the posterior limb of internal capsule, you did very well. Next to the thalamus, we will always find the posterior limb of internal capsule. Again, in the temporal lobe, we have a different structure now that is making an eminence into the lateral ventricle of the temporal lobe. And this is a part of the hippocampus, a gyrus that's been uh, folded into the lateral ventricle, so it makes an eminence, actually fills most of the space in a normal brain of the temporal horn of the lateral ventricle. As you continue your studies, of the coronal sections, always get your orientation by finding those three structures and any other structures or spaces that work well for you. What I have asked you to find is the lateral fissure, the body of the corpus callosum, and the cingulate gyrus. So here as we look at the three sections that we examined in this video, we can see that the caudate nucleus on the most anterior section is very large. And that is going to get progressively smaller as we progress back in the brain. And here we see it uh, quite small because it's now above the dorsal thalamus. Here we had the anterior limb of internal capsule, the fibers running more or less horizontally. Here the internal capsule reaches almost to the ventricular surface, so we are at the genu of the internal capsule, which you may see in your sections where you cut through the anterior commissure. And finally, the internal capsule next to the thalamus, the fibers are running more vertically as they're heading towards the cerebral peduncle of the midbrain, which we see down here. Good luck in your studies.